What's up everyone? It's your boy Norn Rad 89 here and as you can see by the title of this video we are here to talk about Halloween H2O 20 years later the return of Jamie Lee Curtis one of the most iconic characters she plays Laurie Strode in this franchise. We're gonna get into this film this one came out in 1998 so let's talk about it and of course we're gonna be getting some spoilers so if you haven't seen it you have to go run out and watch it and then come back so you can talk about it with me. So Halloween H2O 20 years later, oh man, this is a film that, as I said, is riding off the high of that late 90s horror slasher scream, kind of revitalized horror for a minute there. Horror was kind of in the dead water, not really popular as much as it used to be in the early 80s and late 70s, and then Scream came out, and they just kind of blew the lid off of everything. So Halloween H2O was kind of riding off of the high of that film, and I really remember when this film came out because it was a big deal to see Jamie Lee Curtis back. Everybody was really happy and liked, you know, having Michael and Lori back in the same film. We also have Steve Miner directing this film, so that is actually kind of cool. They brought in a director from the Friday the 13th franchise, so this film, H2O, they play it very safe. Okay, that's one thing I could say, which isn't a bad thing. They play it very safe. They bring back one of the most prominent and iconic characters in the franchise to come back, Laurie Strode. We got Michael back, and they do the best thing I think was the best idea to do, the only way to really carry on after 4, 5, and 6, and that was to retcon them. So this film takes place after Halloween 2, basically. Like, you ignore 4, 5, and 6, and it's 20 years later. So Laurie's alive because in 4, 5, and 6, Laurie Strode dies off screen and all this stuff. So this one, I think the idea for this one was the safest way they could have gone with trying to continue the franchise. And I'm really happy to see Jamie Lee Curtis back. That is probably actually the best thing about this film, just to see Laurie Strode back. Jamie Lee Curtis is an amazing character, like an actress in this film. And I think this character, this version of her, I'm not I'm not like too attached to it, but I do like this version of her character. It's cool. She has a clear cut like arc throughout the entire film. But an uh, one thing with this film is this film is very short. If I remember correctly, I think this runtime, this is the shortest Halloween film. And for me, you can kind of feel it. Like when I'm watching it, like after it ends, I'm just like, dang, it's over already? So as I said before, this one, it's H2O. It's, it's a film that I enjoy. I really do enjoy this film within the franchise, but it's kind of like the middle ground Halloween for me because there's nothing really great about it and there's nothing really bad about it like it's just kind of like a bag of mixed we have some really cool young actors like Josh Hartnett Josh Hartnett is in this film Michelle Williams so like there's those kind of actors some really cool key actors that are just good they're just natural and then you also have this film playing with the member berries a lot so it does a lot of recalling and rehashing certain kills or certain camera shots or vibes like all kinds of stuff it rehashes a lot of things in this film and it also is kind of a sweet homage love letter to horror movies because we got a lot of cool easter eggs throughout this film for other horror movies if you pay attention so as i said this is a very safe film it does feel very pg-13-ish like it's not too hardcore and that's one thing i can say is like I guess, yeah, John Carpenter Halloween's always kind of felt very PG-13-ish. Like, it's never been a hard R or anything like that. It's just, I think this one's not that scary. That's what I like about John Carpenter's Halloween, the first two, and Rick Rosenthal's the second one. Those ones, I think, are just scarier. This one isn't as scary. It's a very safe, simple story. I enjoy it. Like I said, I have fun with this film, but it's not scary at all. One other thing that actually does bother me, probably my main negative with the film, if I was to pick one, is kind of the look and design of Myers. It's not the worst, but the fact that we have like three different, four different masks in this film. And you could kind of tell like as they changed them on set, like there are scenes cut within the same scene, like different cuts. And Myers is wearing a different mask or he looks a little different. So they paid attention to detail in a lot of other aspects of the film and the story. But in terms of execution, there wasn't a lot of attention paid to detail because there's some messed up things you can see in terms of the cuts and the way things look and the filming of the scenes and stuff. So that's why it's like it's very middle ground Halloween for me. Like I said, I don't hate this movie, but I don't love it. I just really do remember it coming out, like I said, riding off the high of the Scream films. And as I said, seeing Lori back, it does have a pretty good third act, like that climactic act when she actually decides to stay at the school and take on Michael Myers. Like that does come out pretty cool. Like you can see 
Laurie Strode as she's learned and she's kind of setting traps and like kind of hiding and like, you know, getting the jump on Michael. So it's really cool to see that she's learned 20 years later, you know, she's thought about it a lot and enough in her head that she's like, I know what I'm going to do if Michael comes. It's just that it's just that urge and that choice to stay and do it. You know what I mean? And she does that when she, you know, finally decides to lock herself in the school area with Michael. So overall, in my book, H2O is going to get a 6.5 out of 10. Like I said, this is still an above average horror film because we have Michael Myers and Laurie Strode coming back into this film. There's a lot of good sweet love letter stuff in this movie to other horror films. And like I said, it's a guy, it plays with the member berries a lot. But as I said, for me, the, it's not really the main negatives, but the things that keep me from really loving this film and being like, oh, I adore this film. Because there's some people I know, Halloween fans, that... They watch one and two and then H2O and then they just stop. They don't even like the other Halloween films. They just like one, two and H2O. But for me, this one, it just, it plays it very safe. It's a short run time and I feel like this is kind of the most soft core. When I watch it, it just feels very soft core. And I'm not scared of this film or anything like that, but I still do enjoy seeing Laurie back, the story, all these cool kind of young actors before they really took off in the cinema world. And as I said, you know, H2O 20 years later, it is the best way I think you could have gone with continuing the franchise, especially after 4, 5, and 6. Thanks for sticking around with me all for this chat of Halloween H2O 20 years later. Tell me in the comments section, what did you all think of this film? Are you a hardcore fan of this film? Do you love it? Or did you hate this film? Or are you kind of like me, just middle ground mediocre of this film, the way you feel about it? I would love to hear from all of you. And don't forget to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. We're going to have a lot of awesome other spooky Halloween videos coming up. Of course, we're going to get on to Halloween Resurrections next. And, oh, man, that's a, we'll get into that film. <laughs> and have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.